The Sky Woman story, shared by the original peoples throughout the Great Lakes, is a constant star in the constellation of teachings we call the original instructions. These are not instructions like commandments, though, or rules. Rather, they are like a compass. They provide an orientation, but not a map. The work of living is creating that map for yourself. How to follow the original instructions will be different for each of us and different for every era. The Sky Woman story endures because we too are always falling. Our lives, both personal and collective, share her trajectory. Whether we jump or are pushed, or the edge of the known world just crumbles at our feet, we fall, spinning into someplace new and unexpected. Despite our fears of falling, the gifts of the world stand by to catch us. It was through her actions of reciprocity, the give and take with the land, that the original immigrant became indigenous. For all of us, becoming indigenous to a place means living as if your children's future mattered. To take care of the in land the old as times, if our, our lives, both material and spiritual, other. they'd stand in their own it. council and craft a plan. But scientists decided long ago that plants and were yet, deaf and mute, locked in your isolation only role without is to be open-eyed and present. The possibility of conversation Gifts was in the realm dismissed. of humility and mystery. As with random acts of kindness, we do not know source. Gifts from the earth or from each other establish a particular relationship, an obligation of sorts to give, to receive, and to reciprocate. That is the fundamental nature of gifts. They move and their value increases with their passage. The more something is shared, that is the greater the its value nature of gifts. Becomes. They move and their value increases with their passage. That is a gift relationship with nature is a formal give and take that acknowledges our participation in and dependence upon natural increase. We tend to respond to nature as a part of ourselves, not a stranger or alien available for exploitation. Gift exchange is a commerce of choice for it is commerce that harmonizes with or participates in the process of nature's and How in our modern world can we find our way to understand the earth as a gift again, to make our relations with the world sacred again? I know we cannot all become hunter-gatherers, the living world could not bear our weight, but even in a market economy, can we behave as if the living world were a gift? But you know, he said, there weren't always grounds to clear. It started out that way, but it became something else, a thought. It was a kind of respect, a kind of thanks. On a beautiful summer morning, I suppose you could call it joy. That, I think, is the power of ceremony. It marries the mundane to the sacred. The water turns to wine, the coffee to a prayer. The material and the spiritual mingle like grounds mingled with humus transformed like steam rising from a mug into a morning mist. What else can you offer the earth which has everything? What else can you give but something of yourself? A homemade ceremony, a ceremony that makes a home. Why do they stand beside each other when they could grow alone? Why this particular pair? There are plenty of pinks and whites and blues dotting the field, so it is only happenstance that the magnificence of purple and gold end up side by side. Einstein himself said that God doesn't play dice with the universe. What is the source of this pattern? Why is the world so beautiful? Why are they beautiful together? It is a phenomenon simultaneously material and spiritual for which we need all wavelengths for which we need depth of perception. When I stare too long at the world with science eyes, I see an after image of traditional knowledge. Might science and traditional knowledge be purple and yellow to one another? Might they, might they be goldenrod and asters? We see the world more fully when we use both. When botanists go walking the forests and fields looking for plants, we say we are going on a foray. 
When writers do the same, we shall call it as a sign of a deeper truth. And the land that of war was gold. close to sacrament. Because the vastness and richness of reality cannot be expressed by the overt sense of statement alone. In indigenous ways of knowing, we understand a thing only when we understand it with all four aspects of our being. Mind, body, emotion, spirit. To be native to a place, we must learn to speak its language. To be a hill, to be a sandy beach, to be a Saturday are all possible verbs in a world where everything is alive. Water, land, and even a day. The language, a mirror for seeing the animacy of the world, the life that pulses through all things, through pines and nut hatches and mushrooms. This is the language I hear in the woods. This is the language that lets us speak of what wells up all around us. And the vestiges of boarding schools, the soap-yielding missionary wreaths hang their heads in the front. So it is that in Potawatomi and most other indigenous languages, we use the same words to address the living world as we use for our family because they are where are words for the simple existence of another living being where is our Yahweh but just because we don't think of them as humans doesn't mean they aren't beings isn't it even more disrespectful to assume that we're the only species that counts as persons the arrogance of English is that the only way to be animate to be worthy of respect and moral concern is to be a human I remember the words of Bill Talbull, a Cheyenne elder. As a young person, I spoke to him with a heavy heart, lamenting that I had no native language with which to speak to the plants and the places that I love. They love to hear the old language, he said, it's true. But he said, with, with fingers on his lips, you don't have to speak it here. If you speak it here, he said, patting his chest, they will hear you.